Okay, Bismillah, let's get started. Um, we're honoured today on a, um, an amazing edition of Pillar to Post to have no other than Liverpool, Juventus, um, Paris Saint-Germain and Valencia legend on the line with us, Momo Sissoko. Mohamed, Salam alaikum, how are you? Yeah, alaikum salam rahmatullah. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. You? Man, it's an honour to have you on, it really is. I said, alhamdulillah, being a Liverpool supporter, uh, following your career, you know, it, it's an honour and we, I'm sure, like many hundreds and thousands of Liverpool supporters across the globe who have followed your career, we're just uh, grateful for all of the service that you gave to Liverpool Football Club. Um, it's an honour, I mean, first of all, how are you? How's your family during this lockdown? Yeah, alhamdulillah, every, everybody is fine. Uh, you know, all, the, my, all my family, my children, they are safe, so alhamdulillah, everything is good. Alhamdulillah. And just for all of the viewers and listeners right now, um, I take it you're in France right now? Yeah, right now I'm in Paris. I'm in Paris. Okay. And uh, in, in terms of the feeling in Paris at the moment, in terms of the lockdown and coronavirus, how is it right now? Is it because it's a huge concern in the UK? We're almost at the height of everything here. How is it there? But right now, you know, it's a bad moment for everyone, you know in terms of, uh, you know, healthy and, uh, you know, a lot of people die also. So it's not an easy situation, but step by step, you know, the people they are much better, but it's, uh, it's a bad situation, to be honest. Obviously, as believers, we believe there, there is goodness and there's head and everything, and we must take these lessons, inshallah. Uh, what, what type of lessons has the virus taught you in terms of just appreciating certain things in life? But to appreciate, you know, this coronavirus, uh, to be honest with myself, I was not waiting to coronavirus to thinking about the, the real life, you know. In my career, you know, the bad moment, the good moment, you know, all the time, you know, I said, alhamdulillah for everything, you know, because, you know, it's not, you know, when you're thinking, you know, some people they are sick with this coronavirus, that's the thing, I need to be better, I need to do this, I need to, but normally without of this, you need to think and you need to every day make better situation, you need to better man and you need to do good things for, for the people. Sure. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to officially um, just welcome everyone. We've seen some nice footwork out there as the ball makes its way down the field, but hold on, pillar two post, out of nowhere, amazing goal! Today we have the exciting opportunity to interview and speak to none other than Liverpool legend Momo Sissoko. We know that he has turned out for many great teams across the whole of Europe. Uh, in fact, he's played in four of the major leagues here in Europe, including the French, Italian, Spanish, and the English League, we have Mohamed Sissoko. Mohamed, welcome to today's show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be in your new post, to be honest. Brilliant. So we're going to go for a few questions today. Um, and uh, just some of those questions will be football related and others will be about your life and what Islam means to you. So let's kick off with football, first of all. So you began your career with Auxerre. Um, yeah. How did you get into football and then eventually playing for some of the biggest clubs in France? Yeah, yeah. I started to, to play in, uh, you know, in my street in France. After that, you know, everyone was uh, playing uh, football because, you know, it was a dream for everyone. After that, I have this chance to join, uh, you know, in, with one good academy, Auxerre. And I yeah. make all my uh, high school there. And after I moved to, to Valencia. And Auxerre was always known as a, a club um, which was churning out some really great talent at the time. Uh, young players who were coming through the French leagues, a lot of African footballers who played there as well. Um, were you part of the same group of young footballers that came through a, a sporting sort of, almost like a conveyor belt of sporting talent? Yeah, you know, Oxel is, a, you know, he's one guy there, he's a Giroud. He's a, yeah. he's a, big, he's a big legend, you know, he has this capacity to, to find the best, player, you know, in my generation, like Abu Dhabi, uh, yes. Younes Kabul, Garad Dambele, and, uh, you know, and, uh, with uh, Djibril Sissé also, uh, Olivier Capo. So he found very good talent, 
on the you know the academy from there before it was it was one of the best now now reading up and said although you you ended up playing as a defensive midfielder and on what a player you were but um i'm reading that you started out as a striker is that right yeah it's true it's true when i was young you know i used to play in a, a striker i make yeah. a lot of goals i make a lot of yeah. goals but after <laughs> that you know when i when uh, you know i signed to valencia you know yeah. i i I, uh, I signed to to play a striker also but to, after that, Rafa Benitez, you know, in one uh, friendly game, he decided to put me in center midfielder. On, yes. Uh, and this moment, I play very good. And after that, you know, I, I do all my career like a center midfielder. When you first broke onto the scene, you were described as the new Patrick Vieira. Was Patrick Vieira one of your um, influences growing up as a young boy? Or was it just that because of your size, because... Mashallah, you're a big guy, you're six foot plus. Uh, I'm assuming you right now you're probably 15, maybe even 16 stones, so you're a big midfielder with long legs. Was that the type of player that you aspired to be like? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, Patrick, Patrick Vieira, Zinedine Zidane, you know, all these type of top player, you know, for young young player from front, you deserve yeah. to be uh, like, like them. So for me, you know, the comparison, it was... He was big because, you know, Patrick Vieira, he was a top, top, top player. But, you know, it was a pleasure to me to, to you know, to the people talk very good about me, about, you know, the, or make this comparison. But what I said is, you know, Patrick Vieira, he was Patrick. On me, he was me. So, you know, it was good comparison, but he was too big for me. You understand? I'm not sure. I mean, yes, he, he had some great success with France. But uh, when you look at your success, you know, um, a uh, title winner in the Spanish league, a title winner in the Italian league, cup winners with Liverpool. So you had great success yourself. So, you yeah. know, um, yeah. you had an amazing career. Um, you, you mentioned some French players there, Zinedine Zidane and Patrick Vieira. Um, interestingly, you know, being um, having the opportunity to play for France and Mali, you chose your national team to be Mali. Did you ever consider France? Yeah, no, you know, when I was young, I, I used to play for France, you know, all the time. All the time I play with the old men, all the, you know, one, two generations older than me. And yes. I have all the capacity to play for France. But uh, after that, I make one uh, traveling in Mali. Yeah. And this moment I decided I decide to change because, you know, when I arrived to Mali, a uh, lot of people was, was waiting for me in the airport thousand yeah. people and uh, show me a lot of love and said Momo you need to come to play with uh, with Mali we, we, we want you on on this moment I feel something and I decide to to join Mali national team that's fantastic and again I mean you, you've grown up in inner city suburbs of uh, uh, or, or the inner city streets of, uh, of of France but then traveling back to Mali to your home country the place of birth of your parents, no doubt. What was that feeling like to see people who, you know, were very related to yourself, but were going through so much poverty and so much difficulty? Uh, you know, it was, uh, for me, it was a ch shock because I, I grew up in France. I never see Mali. I never see Africa. But, you know, when, you, when I saw the people in the eyes, you know, show me this love and, you know, just to see to see me, I said, "Oh, you need to play for Mali because you know, with nothing you can make people happy." You understand? Yeah. So, so after that, you know, I just I just, I joined Mali. You know, I play I play there. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't win nothing. But right now, you know, all the young players growing up, I was the fan. Is a fan of me. So now they write to me in the, you know, Instagram or, or you know, they try to talk to me on the, all the time. They said, thank you very much because you, you are, was a good inspiration for me. That's what I decided to play football, you understand? I, I think you've left that sort of career or, or that in, uh, impression on many people throughout your career. Uh, I still speak to Liverpool fans and you're an icon here in, in the UK as a Liverpool player. Um, you know, you are a passionate player and, you know, tough tackling, 
no-nonsense type of player and, and a real team player as well. Um, in terms of your football, you played for some huge clubs. I said, you know, the clubs that you played for could arguably be the biggest clubs in Europe. Uh, what was your biggest achievement in football, would you say? For me, you know, Liverpool. Liverpool, it was, uh, it was amazing, you know. When you play in Anfield Road, when you play with the good top player like Steven CVG, Xavi Alonso, you know, Fernando Torres, you know, is something special, you know. And uh, to be honest, for me, my, my period in Liverpool, it was short, but I was, uh, I was in a good level. And I think, uh, you know, I was very good in Liverpool because it's a big, it's big club and the institution is, is very strong, very, very strong. I think you came to Liverpool at a very young age uh, and you were up against, at the time, um, a, a midfield which was potentially the best midfield in the world, not just in Europe. You had three world-class players and you were the, the new kid on the block. You had Xavi Alonso, Mascherano and, of course, Steven Gerrard. How did it feel to be part of this midfield four that was, had the perfect balance? You had creativity, you had passing, you had drive, you had energy. And you had two tough tackling midfielders that could cover all of the ground. How, how did it feel to be amongst such great players and, and playing your part as well? Yeah, for me, it was, uh, it was an honour to play with, with them because, you know, they are big player, very good guys also. So for me, you know, what I need to say, alhamdulillah, because, you know, some people that are never playing this high level, and uh, I have this opportunity to play one team like Liverpool, play, win trophies also in this team. You know, 12 years, 12 years after people still remember me, I receive, I receive a lot of messages from Liverpool supporters. So for me, you know, it's, uh, it's a big honour. You know, I, I, I stopped my career and I, uh, I don't realise. I don't realize what I, I do in football. And yeah. alhamdulillah, for, for everything I, I live in my, my career from a football player. Alhamdulillah. Now, now, you say it's been 12 years since you left Liverpool, but I know that you're still following Liverpool. What do you make of the current Liverpool team at the moment? Oh, Liverpool teams are very strong. With the club, is is amazing, uh, amazing coach. Player like Moussa, Mohamed Salah, uh, Sadio Mane, you know, is, I'm very proud to have a, two African players making Liverpool very, in very good level. And to be honest, it's a very strong team, very, very strong. They are. And you, you talk about the African players uh, playing in the Liverpool team. We also have Naby Keita as well. Naby which Keita leads, also, yeah. Which, which leads me on to the next question. There are so many Muslims playing at Liverpool at the moment, and you see how they've been able to, you know, subtly bring the beauty of Islam to people all over the UK when Muhammad Salah first did his sajda and then you have people chanting his name. Um, what was it like for you being, you know, not many Muslim players playing in Liverpool at the time and playing in the Premiership? Was it difficult for you to be, to be a practicing Muslim at the time? No, nothing. To be honest, I, did, I never have a problem of this, you know. And England is uh, is not the same than you know when you go to the other people, other country like uh, you know France, uh, uh, Italy, Spain. You know uh, they respect. You know you are Muslim football player. They respect. You understand? Good. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. What was it like to be playing football at the time? What was it like to be playing football at the time? during Ramadan, etc. Was it difficult for you to continue your fasting or did you take time out? How was it for you? It was easy because, you know, the club gave me everything to be, to be ready to make the Ramadan. So it was a discussion, big, big discussion with uh, Rafa Benitez. And I, I, tell him, I tell him I'm fasting. So he adapts the training with me. So it was, uh, it was normal, you know, I didn't have any problem with this. And alhamdulillah, all the time I, I was making Ramadan, I was making good performance, so <laughs> it was good. <laughs> alhamdulillah, it's great to hear. Um, now, you retired from football in January of this year. 
uh, which for me is shocking because it seems like you've been around for so many years, but you're still only 35 years old, mashallah. But what yeah. have you been doing since January? You know, the, the, my decision, it was very hard to, because, you know, I play all the time football. I have a lot of success. But after, you know, to be honest, uh, the injury for me was, it was bad injury. And now I feel, you know, step by step, you know, is the right moment to set stop on pass on, uh, on to stay stop on football. Mm. But after to, to announce to the people I am stopping football, it was, uh, it was a tough decision. But alhamdulillah, you know, I do what I need to do in football. Right now, you know, I have another career in, the, in football, but the other way. So for me, you know, I'm proud. I'm proud and I'm very happy. And I'm very blessed also. Alhamdulillah, you should be very blessed. Uh, and talking about pride, I remember, and I remember it so well, I was actually in uh, Thailand at the time. Um, and I woke up at about 3 a.m., to watch Liverpool versus Sunderland. And during that time, the ball broke very loosely at the edge of the box and you stepped up and you scored your first goal. Uh, yeah. the, how did it feel when you scored that goal? I, I was very happy, you know. I was not a top scorer, but you know, I make some goals. But you know, I was very happy, you know, to, to make my first goal for, with the Liverpool shot. For me, it was a... I was very happy and uh, I celebrate like a crazy, but I'm, I was very happy, very, very happy. That was a great goal. Is, is that one of your favourite goals that you scored? Because I know you scored a couple for Mali as well, with the national team. Yeah, it was one of the, one of the best also, with one I, I scored also with uh, Juventus. So, yeah, one of the best, you know, to one of my best goals with Liverpool. Good. If there was one aspect of your game that you would like to add to, what would it have been? So if there was one area of your game that you'd like to have developed a bit more, what would it have been? But to, to, to make more goals, more goals, mm -hmm. because, you know, when my, my period in my career, you know, now I finish, I said, maybe you, you should to score more, you should to, you know, I, I, I do a lot of work for the team, but for myself, you, under, you know, in football, you right now the statistic is very important. You know, yes. for striker, for central midfielder, for defense, for defender. But if I, I score more goal, I think in in this moment it was it was much better, much much better. I, I think similar to maybe the likes of Claude Makaleli, etc. You know, they weren't goal scoring midfielders, but they played a very important part in winning the ball back shielding the defence, etc. And, and this is what you did. You were great on corners because of your height and size. Um, so you were almost like that extra defender, breaking down the play and releasing it for other players who were probably a bit more comfortable on the ball and could, could get the goal. So I, I think you played a, a, a very important part in all of the teams that you went to. Um, the next question that I had, and it's very interesting, um, I would love to be interested to know what is your ultimate Liverpool eleven. So the best Liverpool players that you have seen, either past or present. But uh, you want the eleven one, eleven, huh? Yes. So, Starting from so goalkeeper. Goalkeeper, I start with uh, Pepe Reina. Okay. And after right back, I go with uh, Ar uh, Arnold. Arnold, yes, he's doing a great job at the moment. Centre back, I, I go with uh, Sami Ipia on Van, De Van Dijk. Wow. Left left winger, I go with uh, Jimmy Traore. Left uh, defender. Yeah. Yes. Jimmy left Traore. Back. Centre midfielder, I put myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I put myself with, um, I go with Xavi Alonso on Steven Gerrard. Nice. Okay. The uh, tough now. <laughs> I go for sure with Sadio Mane. Yeah. Fernando Torres. Yeah. And I go with. Torres uh, or Salah? Who's going to make it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
between Suarez and the uh, and the uh, Suarez and the uh, Mohamed Salah. Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I need to choose. I go with Mo Salah. Mo Salah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a big one, but I mean, Liverpool have been spoilt with strikers over the last 15 to 20 years. They've had Robbie Fowler, Michael and Owen, uh, obviously the ones that you mentioned now, Torres, Salah, Mane, uh, and of course Suarez as well, who's probably considered one of the greatest Premiership players of all time because of what, what he did then moved on to, uh, to uh, Barcelona now. Um, I'd also like to be very interested to know your best 11 footballers that you've either played with or played against. They can be from any country, any team. Okay, so I start. Uh, Buffon. Yeah. I go with, uh, what's his name? Left, Roberto Carlos. Oh, not Lilian Thoram? I go with Roberto Carlos. Okay. And after, I go with um, Daniel Alves. Right. Uh, Something uh, defender, I go with uh, Cannavaro. Uh, Cannavaro and uh, maybe Cannavaro and uh, Nesta. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, I, I, in this, I put my, my name in this team or not? <laughs> You can't do it, it's your team. Okay, 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 okay. You can I pick me it. if you want. <laughs> okay. So after I go, I go with the, um, I go with uh, Patrick Vieira. I go also with um, Patrick Vieira. I want to be myself. Yeah. Nice. And uh, in front, I put. Uh, TVG. Yeah. And um, you got three striker. players left. Three players left. I go with um, bah, 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 bah. difficult, huh? <laughs> you still got Zinedine Zidane if you wanted to put him in there. I put the, I put Zizou for sure. Yeah. And I put um, you got two strikers. You two strikers. I go Maybe with Thierry uh, Henry. Henry. So, sorry, Thierry Henry. And, uh, <laughs> Thierry Henry. And I go also with uh, Ibrahimovic. Wow. Not that bad, a, huh? <laughs> that's a brilliant side. And if, if I think back to the style of football that you play, I think it's a very strong, tough team who wouldn't be afraid of a physical challenge in, in football as well. You know, you've got a big striker up front. You've got two solid, you know, midfield generals in yourself and Vieira. And then your back two in, uh, um, in Nesta and uh, Cannavaro would certainly not take any prisoners in terms of their tackling and their style. So I think yeah. you're a very strong defensive team that would have the power to hit teams on the break through the likes of Zidane and uh, Gerard as well. So a very, yeah. strong side, very strong side. I can see them yeah. nicking 1-0, 2-0 wins. Uh, and just overpowering teams as well. Okay, we're going to have a, a quick fire round now. So this is just a quick fire round for a bit of fun. So I'm just going to say two words. You have to tell me which is the best one for you. Okay, so do you prefer pasta or rice? Pasta. Chicken or beef? Beef. Summer or winter? Summer. Beach or city? Beach. The ultimate one, Messi or Ronaldo? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, difficult. Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Okay. Liverpool or Juventus? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make you pick. I know. I know that one. Uh, oh, this is a difficult one. France or Mali? Mali, 100%. Oh, no. uh, you prefer to do weights or cardio? Weight. Weights. Ali or Tyson? Ali. Ali. Paris or Milan? Paris. Nice. And final two questions. Who is the best player you've ever faced? 
played against Zizou. Zizou. Zizou was uh, Zizou <laughs> and Zizou and also Ronaldinho. <laughs> very very good. What what was the difference between Zizou and Ronaldinho? These two type of players was it because of their control, their touch, and how they could just get you away? Know, you know Mozart. Yeah. Zizou Zizou was Mozart. He yes. was, you know, it was beautiful to see him. You know. Yeah. When he touched the ball, he had something special. Ronaldinho yes. have, he have the same, but much powerful. Like, you know, skills, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, he had more skills. pace. Yeah. yeah, more pace, more pace. But both of them, high, high level. Unbelievable players. And finally, who was the best player you played with? So which was your favorite teammate that you thought? This guy is unbelievable class. You know, Del Piero was an amazing player, you know, but also CVG for me was, uh, can do everything, scoring goals, uh, powerful, he defend, attack, everything. He have, he have everything. So for me, between CVG and uh, Alexander Del Piero, and, and you played with Steven Gerrard in the FA Cup final uh, against West Ham. Uh, yeah. A game which you played very well in, and Steven Gerrard scored that the pretty much the goal that took Liverpool into extra time. What was the feeling like when you when you saw him release that ball from from his right foot at the edge of the box? But in this moment, it was uh, you know, to be honest, during the game, I said it's finished for for us. We 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 lose this final, but you know, once you have player like Gerard, everything happened. So he did that, He decided to 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 make his role like a leadership on scores goals, and after that, we win this uh, this final against uh, West Ham. Amazing game, amazing game, and great memories yeah. as a Liverpool supporter. Um, you'll look back on your career with great memories. Um, did you ever imagine? growing up that you would attain so much success and so much security as, as a young boy growing up in France? No, because it was difficult. You know, when I was young, it was not easy for my, for my, my mom, my dad. So I, wa I, was this, I, ha I have this ambition to, to fight for myself, you know, because where, where I grew up, it was not easy, you know, all my, all my friends, all these things, it was not easy. But I have one decision i have one and my man i said i have the opportunity to make my 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 mom and dad happy and to change the life so alhamdulillah allah give me a lot of uh, lot of things positive things for me give me everything to make my dream to make my dream alhamdulillah my my family is good and uh, you know i'm blessed i'm blessed and if there's advice for a footballer similar to yourself growing up right now and watching this, there's, there's going to be, inshallah, millions of young footballers, Muslim and non-Muslim, watching. What is your advice to them? The advice is to walk, to walk, to, to, to believe and to, to fight. Because, you know, the footballer, you know, the real life is not easy. You need to fight for... To, to, to deserve to have what you want to have, you understand? But you need to fight because you know the new generation, the new generation they don't want to fight. They, uh, so they need to fight, you know? When you want something, go. Go to have this thing, you know? This is, uh, this is very important. So that determination to set your targets yeah. and make sure that you keep on going and, and you work hard towards those is is very important. Very, very important. Very important. We're, we're just a few days away from Ramadan now here in the UK and obviously all over the, the world now, Muslims will be uh, observing the amazing month of Ramadan. Um, it's going to be a difficult one because of the coronavirus issue. There's, there's no opportunity for us to pray that are we together, um, just a day, maybe a day where we may not be able to see our family and our immediate friends um, how are you preparing for Ramadan? 
you know, I prepare myself. You know, it's not easy because, you know, Ramadan time is, is a special month. You know, is you know, you, you, you focus, you focus on what you need to do. You focus on everything. And to be honest, it's the time to, you know, to, to be with your family, your friends, you know, go to Taraweh, pray, you know. And without of this, it's very strange, very strange. And, but alhamdulillah, we, we're going to pray at home with the children and uh, everything is going to be uh, good. Inshallah, inshallah. Now, um, I just want to lead on to um, another question of mine. So I work for a charity called Human Appeal. We work all across the globe and charity is something very close to my heart. And what does charity mean for yourself? Charity is very important, you know, very important because, you know, uh, when you make something, you you make some people happy. Some people don't have nothing. Like you know, now Ramadan time, I send a lot of things in Mali: food, sugar, you know, oils, you know, to make. You know, and you know, I feel uh, something because you know, I said, Alhamdulillah, I'm living good. I have, uh, you know. The table is full, on, but in Africa, a lot of, lot of places, they don't have nothing. When I saw, when I saw, when I go to Mali, or when I go to poor city, when I saw, I feel very sad, you know. But if you can make something, like I said to, for my foundation, when I, I talked with the people, I said, even if you give us, Small money, small is is not is is good because you know with this we can make people happy. This is the most important most important thing. You understand? Yeah, and having the opportunity to have traveled uh, right the way across Africa, I've seen the poverty in Africa uh, in areas like Niger, Mali, you know, Tanzania, uh, Central African Republic, uh, Cameroon, yeah. all these countries that I've visited or have had connections of. This thing, you, you see poverty that's unparalleled uh, across the world. Do you think it's important for you know, African footballers and maybe even French footballers to keep on pushing and promoting this, this, um, this message of charitable work? I know that the likes of uh, Sadio Mane does lots of charity work and there's lots of other footballers that are involved. But what's the message to other footballers and sports people who are now successful? What can they do? To help. If you help small, make people, 100 people happy, you understand? But Alhamdulillah, Allah give us, we need to give also, you know, with everyone in this level, but to give small things, you can do a lot of things and you can have a lot of hasanat also. Definitely. This is, this is, is important. Most definitely. Okay, I think we've, we've come to the end of the interview. Was there anything else that you would like to add to this interview? Anything that you would like to, uh, a, a message that you would like to get across? Yeah, to, you know, we, we know everyone uh, is uh, living in a bad situation, but Allah, uh, Allah is in the control and to everyone be safe and uh, that's it. And Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. Ramadan Kareem to you as well, man. Yeah, yeah, inshallah.